Hi guys, um, this will be a F-Storm 3DS Max tutorial. Sorry, I do not have a headphone type microphone. Uh, mine is basically on my disc, so you might um, hear me sounding a bit far, I would say. But here's the scene. It's basically a commercial project. It's just a living room with a large window, some modern interior, basically. Gray sofa, this metal glass center table with some carpet. Um, the aim of this project will be just to create the room. The sofa will just be replaced later on by the client. I think this sofa is actually some sofa that they're actually selling so they'll replace it later on um, inside uh, the image I give them. So basically I'll send a blank image and they'll attempt to, they're going to be photo uh, photographing this in some studio I think and then placing it inside the image. Um, but basically I just need to set up the scene now so you guys can see. Alright, so let's go ahead. So we're in Max. Uh, you'll be going to see a lot of um, toolbars here, basically. I use a lot of these toolbars when I work. Some more than others. Um, for example, I have Debris Maker for making debris. Field of view. This gives me a quick access to changing. This changes my field of view, basically, to 70 quickly. Uh, in Max, it's, I think it's 45 is default. But I use this a lot. This is Convert to Editor Poly. This is very useful. All the group open, group close, group attached icons are here. The properties toolbar for basically an object. I'm sorry, you might hear my little son in the background. Um, I also have an accent, so it might be hard for some of you guys to maybe understand a lot of what I'm saying, but hopefully you do. Alright, so basically I have a lot of these icons here, so they make my workflow a lot faster. Some people are always wondering why I work so fast. Well, it's because of these toolbars, a lot of these uh, make life easy. For example, this primitive, this teapot. From here, edit poly, sorry, the edit poly. Properties, I can see the properties of this really fast. And you have some live measure stuff here from, I think this is from Moai. Screen grab, rename. This is pretty useful. Uh, basically, I just come in here, custom user interface, find the one that I need. My tools, field of view 70, new, add it to a toolbar, and you know how that goes. All right, so let's get started. So, this is the image here, so what I normally do for this, it's this type of sofa, we'll find one maybe on 3D Sky or in my library. I'll add one basically in Max and we'll see based on this to judge the size of the room. Right now I have no sizes, so this is going to help me to judge the sizes more accurately. So let's go. Alright, so for this I'll be using connector which is fantastic for just dragging and dropping models into the scene. Um, some people were asking me before, how do I organize my things in Connector? I usually I have two screens, so uh, you might not see me when I'm dragging and dropping things in because I keep this on the next screen and I keep Max open on one screen. So basically I have things arranged by um, basically different models, different uh, my high and low poly, these are my main folders basically. These are the ones that are the ones that I use the most. Midviz, these are my models, so I'm keeping them basically in different categories, lighting, electronics, decor, so I'll try to keep each basically mirrors. So these are some mirrors that I made. I try to make this a little bigger. So I have all these things in their different categories. So we'll go in and let's find ourselves this sofa. Put this on the next screen, it's much easier. 
So let's find ourselves a sofa. Seated, seated, seated. So I have under my furniture group. Seated, indoor. Now let's find something. Alright, whatever, let's grab this one. Just for our size in the model, basically. I also should mention this is not some pro tutorial that's going to be on sale, so I really don't care about um, how how I sound, if anything sounds like I wrote it down, scripted or anything. I just, just work in basically showing you guys how I work. So this is a sofa. I usually work in units, inches. I just prefer inches. So we'll see how big this sofa is. So when you come here, you can go to measure. Let's see how tall it is. So in the Z, it's 26. This way, da, 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 80. This way, it's 63. So I can see the measurements right here. So I know the sofa is uh, probably accurate. So let's go in and based on this scene, I see I need this wall, I need this wall. I'm going to do the whole room basically, which makes life easier. So, so far it is. Mirror it this way. Uh, yeah. Let's drop in some walls. So, let's go into the top view. And let's create some walls. So, for this one, it's much easier to use a plane because I use um, a model using Edit Poly a lot. So, to keep everything nice and clean, it's easier to just go in and use planes. So, I'm going to make this wall. Let's see, let's make it 8 inches thick. Convert it to poly. Based on the reference, it's about maybe three feet away from this from the edge of this sofa. Maybe five feet in the back. I will make it five feet all around. So let's go. So put it here. And let's change this from absolute to so let's just make this minus 36 and let's bring this to here and I had connector open I don't know what happened but sometimes it makes mux really slow to here, to here, you can see some of the wall thickness is not consistent, but uh, I really don't care. All right, let's turn on snaps, vertex endpoint, turn on grid snaps, hold on shift, right click, and you get enable axis constraints. I use this a lot, so let's drag this up. And so, based on this, I can uh, turn on snaps. And it lines up with this, and this one lines up with this. And let's bring this one here. All right. All right as well, uh, you guys probably know the um, faster way to do this, probably to have drawn some rectangle or then extruded it. but. Like I said, I really don't care, it's just a lazy Sunday and doing a project, commercial project. Alright, so here goes the window. Connect. Like it so. So this one is about here from the back and this one about here from the front. And the height of this, I think this goes up maybe uh, nine feet. Let's make it nine feet. So let's show this model. Make sure you have straightened corners. And let's type in nine feet. And 
Let's see how it looks from here. So you see now where this field of view 70 comes in handy. Click it and it changes the field of view. So yeah, based on this, I think I'm just judging it here. Based on this angle when I zoom in. If I try to pick some similar angle that I'll use for the shot. Nine feet, so it may be too tall. So let's go in and let's put eight feet. This more looks like what it should be. Any point, uh, let's make it hard. So I just came to the properties here. I have this graphite. Oh, where is it? Toggle ribbon. What is the graphite toolbar? So I usually use these ones a lot, especially the geometry and the properties. They're really fast and they get you where you need to go. So for this one, let's add a slice. I just need to create this um, part where the window actually sits. So across here and the opening for the window. So since it was on the ground, let's make it 80. Let's see if it comes up to that. Yeah, let's make it 80. Um, add an edit body modifier. And let's delete that. And let's bridge this. So I can go to geometry, uh, I think it's edges, yeah. Edges and just, I need to put this on a toolbar or something. Edges, bridge, bridge, bridge. So you quickly have this seal up. Right. So let's add a, this is going to be a concrete floor, so it doesn't need anything specific. I'll convert it to a poly. It's going to be my roof. Let's show this one. Let's make this one four. All right, let's bring in this one also for the floor. This is not a particularly complex scene, so things look a little bit easy. All right, let's go to f -Song. Uh, let me see if my render is set to f -storm. Yeah, so I'm using 1.1 Z, <laughs> I think it is. Uh, Alright, so f -storm. So I have the f -storm material here, let's call this roof. It's usually a good idea to name these materials, especially when you come here to create material libraries to be used in different files. And as you can see here, I have a material library I made for a specific job I did yesterday. So, because it was few scenes and each scene needed these materials, same materials. So instead of copying the model over, I just made a material library. And then you can get all the scene, scene material that comes here. I don't need it anymore, so I'll close it. So basically, it's more, very important to give these names sensible names. Actually. So walls, add walls, and let's add floor. All right, I'm gonna check if this recording is actually going properly. So. Give me a second, let me just check it.